it's Swifty, and welcome back to Hustle Cat. So last time, uh, we found all, out all about the cat curse, and that everybody's cats, and that I'm probably going to turn to a cat. And then we also found out that Finley is actually Jelly Donut, the internet famous cat, which was awesome. So yeah, that was super fun. So And we also found a weird book in the basement that mentions all of us and had a cat on the cover and looks like a spell book so we've been trying to decode that for the last few days so let's get back into it so i've been doing this for days now i wake up go to work come home lose myself in the grimoire is that how you say that and barely make it to bed right before the sun comes back up lather rinse repeat listen to me i'm calling the thing a grimoire now I can't stop reading this dang book or mumbling to myself, I guess. But seriously, there's all this stuff about witches, covens, powers. I've never seen anything like it. Sometimes I don't even understand the words on the page, but they make me feel strange when I read them. Powerful, I guess. Like if I keep going, they'll suddenly click into place and I'll learn something unknowable. It's getting to me, though. I feel haggard. My coworkers have pointed out I'm getting some wicked bags under my eyes. I haven't told them about the book. I bet they think I've just been up playing video games or something. Mer, What's up with you? You're so friendly lately. Since when do you sit in laps? They do say that some witches get familiars. No. That's ridiculous. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I'm not becoming a witch. I've been trying some of the stuff in the book out, though. Just a bit. You can't blame me for that. Hear me out, but I think I managed to move a cola can with magic. Maybe it was balanced weirdly or something and fell on its own, but it felt like it worked. Definitely been reading this gibberish book for too long. I should stretch my legs or something. Right, Mochi? Mer. See, even Mo Mochi agrees, and he hates exercise. Hey, it's actually pretty early. Reading a dusty tome all night actually reset my sleep schedule to a normal one. I'm going to celebrate with some coffee, breakfast, and a nice walk. When did I become a coffee drinker anyway? It's not bad at all now that I've gotten used to it. The stuff I drink is actually a real shade of tan now, almost. My palate is refining every day. I kind of just want a big old cheese danish or something, too. There's that corner store down the road. I've been in there for a lot of stuff, and the breakfast pastries look really good. I could also just stop by the cafe. It's closed to customers today, but I bet someone's hanging around who, who could give me a nice fancy coffee or something. Uh, go to the corner store for coffee or just get some from work. I'm assuming if we go into to the corner store, we're gonna run into somebody from work. And if we go to work, we'll definitely run into somebody. I don't know who will be around. So this is kind of a gamble. I think I'm gonna go to work. Because there's probably a greater chance of Landry being at work. You know what? Why waste money when I just get some coffee for free at the cafe? Exactly. If I had a choice between paying for coffee and getting free coffee, I would go for the free coffee. I'm still not real great on that water slash coffee grounds ratio. But better I learn with, with, with myself than with customers, right? Last time I tried to make coffee was a disaster. It came out as this gross brown water. I really have to learn to do this right. That's true, it'll be practice too. Huh, it doesn't look like anybody's here yet. There's some lights on in the cafe and on the floor above, but I don't see anyone moving around inside. Maybe I was wrong about people coming here on their days off? Is it really just gonna be me hanging out at work like I have nothing better to do? All right, I'll just go make some coffee and then figure out what else to do for the day. Luckily, I just got my key. I can unlock the door and let myself in. Even though there are no people here, the cafe still feels busy with all these cats milling around. There goes Hash Browns, bossing around some other cat like usual. Now, is it now or Nao? Nao is making eyes at his own reflection on the floor. Kotick's in a cute little ball by the window. Marina and Ayn are catching some sun. Ah, Genta has his paw against around one of the other cats like they're spooning. Who is it? I peek in close to get, get a look and maybe a photo, but when I see that little seal point nose sticking out, I pause. Oh! Is Genta cuddling with Haze? Is that Haze? His ear flicks and one eye shoots open. It looks like he it looks like he takes a moment to register what's happening, but once he does, his eyes dilate to the size of saucers. Uh, Avery. 
His tail puffs up and he backs away from Junta at a surprising speed. He bumps into the wall and then hops a solid six inches into the air in shock. Hayes, calm down. It's just me. I, I just, I, Junta was crying a lot and, and then I just sort of, oh, please don't make fun of me. Junta's one of the newest cats. He's a sweetheart stray we found wandering the streets, but he scares easily, so he gets clingy sometimes. Why would I do that? That was really sweet of you. Slowly I reached down and scrunched Junta, scratched Junta behind the ears. He's confused by all the commotion, but doesn't seem too stressed out about it. But I, you're so thoughtful about the cats. It's great. Oh, I, I guess so. Thanks. I'm jealous actually. I wish I could sleep in a pile of cats. It is pretty nice. He seems to calm down a bit, thankfully. How about some coffee? I could go for a cup and I bet you could too. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to change back. J don't look okay. You got it. Despite being around all these cursed cat people, I've never seen a transformation in progress. Maybe it's not something I'm supposed to see. Anyway, it's probably as rude and creepy as watching someone get changed, so I'm not about to peek. Okay. Would you like a cappuccino? I'll go make us some coffee. That sounds great, thank you. Score, I wanted to mess with the coffee machine after all. I sink into my favorite spot on the big circle couch and take a big old sip of my coffee. I could sit here all day. Maybe I will. Ah, it's Landry! Oh, Avery, you're here early. Yeah, I thought I'd come see what everybody was doing. I've been cooped up in my house too long. It's good to see you. I'll be around doing some handiwork, but let me know if you need anything. Oh, don't worry about me. It sounds like you're busy enough. That's, there's the door again. Hello, hello. So, Avery, what breed are you? Do you know yet? I, excuse me? Cat, I mean. Sorry, is that still a sensitive subject? N no. Nothing's happened to me since the day I grew the whisker. I figured it'd take more time. That's strange. I turned in about a week. Yeah, me too. Hayes nods from the other couch. This wouldn't be the first time Avery's slow on the uptake. Were you just standing there waiting for a chance to say something like that? Of course not. He totally was. They're right though. Playing with that book made me totally forget about the curse. Why haven't I seen any changes since then? Well, I'm gonna go do some laundry. Let me know whenever you find out. I'm betting you'll be a silver tabby or something pretty like that. I hope the type of cat I become is still a person. Reese rolls his eyes and flops down on the long row of seats to the side of the cafe. He sells in with a spiral-bound sketchbook. Finley picks up a large bag and trundles towards the stairs. Is there a laundry machine up there? Yeah, in Graves' apartment. He lets us do laundry there for free. Wait, Graves lives here? Yeah, duh. The third floor is his apartment. Shouldn't we see him, like, all the time? He's basically a ghost, as is. He's usually out until really late at night and leaves pretty early in the morning. I don't think he sleeps. I bet he sleeps in a fancy coffin. Ha, <laughs> I just mean he's really busy. He takes care of all the administrative stuff for the cafe, after all. Hmm. Well, I better get to work. That ramp isn't going to build itself, after all. Landry gives me a little wave, then disappears into the back. He's back a few minutes later with lots of lumber, with hands full of lumber and a roll of carpet. So that's why all that stuff was in the basement. Sorry, it might get a bit noisy in here. That's no problem with me. I suppose if you must. Landry and Reese go, go back to work. A few minutes later, I hear Finley. I peek up at the balcony and she's filling with a laptop or something. Everybody seems to be keeping themselves busy. Maybe I should help one of them? But on the other hand, I'm not getting paid for it, so... See what Landry's doing, see what Finley's doing, see what Reese is doing, or stay put. I wanna go see what Landry's doing. What's Landry hammering over there? He said something about a ramp. What's up? Oh, Avery. Just making some adjustments to the cafe for some newcomers. Aw, look, they're so cute. Oh, cool, let me help. You don't have to do that. I don't, but I'm gonna. <laughs> he laughs, but he keeps doing, going about doing what he's doing. I guess that's his way of saying no. Aw, there's gotta be something I can do. Make sure no cats come over while I'm working. I don't want them trying to play on this until we get all the carpeting on. This one looks a little different than, or a lot different than the others. The ramp is cute, but do you think they need it? Graves asked me to install these. He said he's bringing in a kitten with hypoplasia. Oh, what's that? He says it's a condition some cats are born with that affects their coordination. 
I don't want the little guy to get hurt trying to jump up on these platforms, so I'm gonna add some ramps to the structures. I almost didn't catch all of that because he's just hammering away while he talks. Can't even take a break for a little conversation, huh? Your structures? Did you make all of these? <laughs> yeah. These are amazing. I thought you were just a charming waiter, but you're so talented too. Ha, <laughs> it's, it's no big deal. I'm really grateful Grave gives me a lot of chances to build things like this though. I'd miss working with my hands if he didn't if he didn't set up a workshop for me. Grace did that? No answer. He's just hammering away. Um. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Did you see all the, see all the saws and things in the corner of the basement? That's for me. Oh, I assumed he was dissecting zombies back there. <laughs> Avery. He gives me a light, playful slap on the so shoulder. His other hand is still balancing a hammer while propping up the ramp. Maybe I should take something from him before this becomes a workers' comp case. Can cats even get workers' comp? You're so unforgiving. He's really not a bad guy. Seriously, these are amazing though. Did you design the whole place yourself? Huh, <laughs> oh goodness, no. Most of it was blueprints Graves gave me. Most of it, you say? I bet there's some of your own personal genius in there too. Oh, <laughs> you flatter me. I give him a quick wink and a smile, and he's a deer in the headlights. He drops the hammer and quickly fumbles to recover it and himself. It's so cute watching him get flustered like that. We all get caught up doing our own thing when I hear footsteps approach from the kitchen. Why, if it isn't the big boss himself. My wonderful cat herders, I see you've been keeping the place well while I've been gone. He looks us over, and his gaze stops on me for just a second. He has a weird glimmer in his eye that I can't really place. Ew. I'm on to you, buddy. I know you have something to do with the, that book. Can't have just been there because you're a collector or something. Heck, it has our names in it. I don't really understand those pages since the bookmark doesn't work on them, but still. Must be something fishy. Landry. Excellent work on the cat's equipment, as always. Oh, but I'm not done yet. Have you ever given me a reason to doubt? I know you'll do a stellar job. We can talk about future designs soon. Sure thing, boss. Reese, I see you've been keeping your protege in line. Keep up the good work. Of course. Nothing gets past me. The eyes and talent of an eagle. Protege? Are they talking about me? Haze, my sweet Haze, can I trouble you for some of your exquisite coffee? I'd be happy to. You are a treasure, as always. I hope you've been keeping well. Oh, well. Finley. Finley peeks her head over the upstairs balcony to shout down. Come on, just come downstairs. Present! Your videos are keeping me busy. We hit a whole new audience record the other day. And six adoptions in two days. The home inspections never end. I'm sorry you have such a precious, adorable girl here making your business work. You are my internet lifeline. I have no head for such things. I bet he's been lost ever since telegrams went out of style. And Avery. He's real close now. I don't think I like it. He puts his hand on my shoulder and levels his gaze down to mine. That blue eye is so chilling. It really is a telltale heart situation. I'm on to you, Avery. What? You're the fastest learner we've had here yet. I forget you're still new. I feel like he's not just talking about the cafe work. Well, I've been doing a lot of studying. So you have. So you have. He lets go of my shoulder and turns away to the rest of the employees. He definitely wasn't talking about the cafe. He definitely knows something about that book. Well, he gave you the bookmark that lets you read it. I'd ask him more, but maybe it's not a good idea in front of everybody else. I'll chase him down later when he's leaving or something. I have to get more information. Where's Mason? I wanted to see her today too. She hasn't been showing up as much on her days off lately. Maybe she's found a comfy gig at an old cat lady's or something. Haven't been to your place in ages though. <gasps> when did you get here? You startled me. Ah, oh, Mason, I'm so glad you're here. It wouldn't be the same if you didn't join us. As much as I adore your cooking, today I'd rather give you respite. Think I'm gonna cook on my day off? Huh. Of course not. 
That's why I will take the pleasure of providing you, my dear employees, with dinner today. But first, an announcement. He slips back into the kitchen for a moment. When he returns, he's holding a garment bag. No. You haven't even let me make the announcement. I know what this is. Absolutely not. Hmph. For my more cooperative employees, then. With a surely practiced flourish, Graves unzips the garment bag and lets it fall to the floor. Oh no. 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 Is that somehow both plaid and checked flannel? I don't know you- I didn't know you could make a suit out of that type of material. Just sort of appalled silence from everybody. Reese looks personally offended. Mason just straight up leaves. No appreciation for your new uniforms. And to think I had it made in your size, Avery. Ch try it on, Avery! She's still shouting down from the balcony. I can't blame her. I wouldn't want to get any closer to that suit either. I'd rather wear a potato sack. And I went through such trouble to have it made. Check with us next time before you waste your time. Tis easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission, as they say. See? You knew we wouldn't agree to this. Well, I'll leave this here in case you all come to reason. Take some time to admire it. I'll be off for one last errand, but trust when I return you'll all be treated to a wonderful meal. Until then, farewell. With that, he disappears into the kitchen. I'm gonna follow him, just to see what happens when he leaves. I get in the kitchen in time to see him slip through the back door. I'm sure I'm gonna see that black cat. I just know it. I peek out the door as he leaves. He gets further and further away from the cafe, but I don't see him change. Not even when he gets past the point where I know he's off cafe grounds. Hmm. I guess the others already assumed he wasn't affected by the curse, but why? Does this prove he's the culprit? How else would he escape whenever... Whatever it was that got everyone else. Although to be fair, I can't use that as proof. After all, I also escaped the curse and I sure as heck didn't cause it. This seems like a good time as any to see if I can find out more about what's going on. If Graves is the perpetrator and I don't know why Avery hasn't realized this, it's entirely possible he has control over his transformations. Like it's clear the others do too. Like when they're on cafe grounds, they can either be in human or cat form, but when they leave the cafe grounds, they're automatically forced into cat form. But if Graves is really the perpetrator of the spell, it would make sense that he has control at all times. I don't know what's going on with Avery. It seems like maybe Graves has like picked her out as a possible apprentice or something. Uh, if he's a warlock, then maybe he senses like the magical potential in her. So she also has the ability to control it, but I'm not entirely sure. So I guess we'll see as the, as the story progresses. I'm getting way too into this. <laughs> I'm thinking about this way too much. <laughs> I peek back into the main cafe. It looks like everybody's back to whatever they were doing before. The newly arrived Mason has kicked up her feet on the couch and seems to already be dozing off. Finley did say we have free access to Graves' apartment after all. I could go look and see what he's hiding up there. I'm also kind of curious of what it looks like. But then again, if he was hiding something there, wouldn't somebody have noticed it by now? Maybe he keeps all his magic stuff in that creepy basement. Wonder which would be better to search. Uh, I would think it's in the basement, because remember there's that locked cabinet down there? But at the same time, I kind of want to see the apartment. Hmm, this is a tough one. Because I've been in the basement, and that's where he put the book, which makes me think that it's highly possible that's where all the magic stuff is. But I also kind of want to see the apartment. I don't think he would keep... Well, they're both public access, though, so maybe... Because anyone can go in the basement, too. He has that locked cabinet, but I mean, I'm not going to be able to get into that. Uh, I'm going to check out his apartment because I'm curious what it looks like. You know, I've always got the chance to go into that creepy basement. I should take the opportunity while Graves has gone to root around his apartment a bit. I tiptoe past Finley on the second floor. Sure, she's going to say something to me about where I'm going, but she doesn't look up from the computer. Oh, it's not as bad as I was expecting. Wow. It's immaculate. This makes me feel embarrassed about the state of my apartment right now, but whatever. He's probably showing off because he knows people come up here a lot. It's well designed, too. 
I can make fun of the guy all I want, but I have to admit he has a sense of style, interior decorating wise at least. Heck, that cat castle looks downright regal. I wonder if Landry built that one. I don't see any cats in the apartment, but would have but it would make sense that he'd have a setup for them, right? There's probably one in here somewhere. Ah, there we go. I see a single suspicious blue eye peeking at me from inside the castle. Is that Graves? Black cat peeks out. It is! Mrrr. No, that's not Graves. It doesn't have two color eyes. It's not. Oh, hey there. The cloudy eye belongs to a dark mass of black fur that refuses to move, even though its gaze follows me everywhere I turn. Hey, buddy, it's okay. The sleek tail thumps in annoyance against the carpeted ca castle wall. I see you've met the great Countess Dracula. Oh my god, you called your cat Dracula? Really? And it's a girl? <laughs> Oh man, I'm making myself cough. Sorry about that. <laughs> Shoot. I've been caught. <laughs> Be cool, Avery. Play cool. You named your cat Countess Dracula? Just Dracula, but she's a venerable lady now, so she deserves our respect. She's nearly 19, so I hope you've been taking care of her. Graves leans forward and pats his hands on his legs. Slowly, Dracula pulls herself from the cat castle and hops down. She looks good for her age. She's a tad shy with new people, but she's great. We've been through a lot together. Grace sits on the couch and holds his hand in front of him with an almost unexpected gentleness. Come here, you sweet old lady. Dracula saunters a little bow-legged, walk up to him and headbutts his palm. Burp. Hello, darling. I can hear her purring from here. I'm taken aback at how cute they are together. I don't think you'll find what you're looking for in here, but you're welcome to stay for a while regardless. I feel terrible that we haven't been able to chat since you started. I wasn't looking for anything. You're a terrible liar, you know. Alright, so maybe I was kind of curious. Aha. Well, I'm here now, so if you have any questions. How do you ask someone if they're a witch anyway? Hey, are you a witch? Seems a bit... I don't know about that. I know there's something weird about this cafe. Well, I'd be insulted if you said anything less about a cafe that I designed. I prefer weird. What do you know about this curse business? His eyes flicker for a moment, cold and fiery, before he turns them back toward Dracula. We are all cursed in our own ways, Avery. There are some instances where you must be your own savior. I will, if you won't help me. You're a strong one. I like that. Hell or high water, I'm gonna stick it to graves and get this dumb curse lifted for everybody. How about that? Well, I'd best be headed back out. I need to make a few rounds before I pick up dinner. You'll join us, won't you? Like I'm gonna pass up a free dinner. Ha, huh, of course. He stands up from the couch and lightly ruffles my hair as he passes me. You're a shop one, Avery. I'm glad you've joined my employ. Well, you're keeping me busy, for sure. But he's already gone. How the heck did he leave so quickly? I better get back downstairs. The others might be wondering if I fell asleep or something. I drift from person to person, helping everybody with what they're doing for a while, but eventually the urge takes over. I just want to play with the cats. I'd say. If I was there, I'd play with the cats. Shinsuke gets all... Gets all get excited. Oh, gets all excited when I bust out the bell toy. Guess I'd be excited too. Owl gets messed up on the catnip toy. Neo is swatting, swatting at his own tail, but I think the tail might be winning. Valentine is rolling around, kicking nothing in the air. Seems to be having plenty of fun without me. Marina chases the feather on a string all the way up the platform. Wish I had that much energy. And then they start taking naps. And that seems... Did I just pass out? <laughs> Will someone please exhume Avery from that pile in the corner? Huh? I jump up from with a start. When did I fall asleep? Good morning, sleepyhead. Why is there garland on my head? In fact, I seem to be covered in cat toys. What the heck? Well, we tried to wake you up. With catnip? What is all this? Finley. What? I just put a mouse there to see if you'd wake up, and then you didn't, so I put another, and another, and another, and another. I got some really cute pictures out of it. Oh my god, don't put those on the blog. Why would I ever do that? 
I fling a catnip toys or a catnip mouse at Finley as hard as I can. Ricochets off her head. Ha! Ow! Hey! Okay, okay. They won't go on the blog. Good. Today. No! Finley, be nice. All of you, stop distracting from the matter at hand. Dinner has arrived. I thought we were going to actually make dinner, not just order takeout. We usually order takeout on off days. It's nice to get a change of pace and try some of the other restaurants around here. And there are fewer dishes to wash. The cuisine du jour is brought to us by the Thai restaurant downtown you all so enjoy. Avery, I believe you will be experiencing their splendor for the first time tonight. What did you get? You didn't ask me what I wanted from the menu. I did, actually. You mumbled something about pad thai, then rolled over on top of a bunch of catalase. Well, I mean, that's what I would have wanted anyway, so... Yeah, girl, I hear you. Pad thai's amazing. I look over to the tables. It looks like they pulled them all together into one long row again. Takeout boxes pile up on the center table, and all the places have already been set. Bon appetit, my dear employees. And the pack descends on the takeout boxes. After some sorting, we're all settled with our respective food, and we sit down for dinner. Grace takes a seat at the head of the table. Well, he claims it name, but he's hardly sitting at all. When he's not flitting between us and offering us drinks, he's standing behind his chair and telling a story in as grand a graves gesture as you'd imagine. When I was in college, none of you would have recognized me. What, did you take a break from your goth phase? You go grunge for a while? I would never break style. No, in fact, if anything, I suppose you could say I was more goth then. I had long black hair and wore such elaborate makeup. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we never would have recognized you. <laughs> if anything, that sounds more on brand than you are right now. Why stop? You can't imagine how much time that took from my day. I have a business to run after all. Dad showed me a photo once. The one of you with your bandmate. Who? The guy with the mohawk? I don't know how he got such a huge hawk. Ah, uh, yes. It was pure witchcraft, that hair. He's doing that on purpose, isn't he? With the witch jokes. Wait, wait, you were in a band? Are you really surprised by that, Landry? Come on, everybody was in a band in the 90s. <laughs> I don't recall that stereotype, but yes. I was, in fact, in a band. I bet it was called, like, Masters of the Night or something like that. No, Avery, it was not. I'd thank you to give me more credit than that. Nah, more like Nightly Nightshade. Or Dark Carousel. No, no. Or Sorrows of Blood. A two haze. You are all so cruel. You have to tell us the real name or they'll keep going. I refuse to further enable this slander. It was Spider Coven with an X. Reese. What? How do you spell spider with an X? Goth willpower. <laughs> You're kidding me. They had a song that was called something like Rose Baptism. I only remember the parts that weren't in French, though. No, 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 no. Ahem, it went something like... No, no, this is traitorous. My own people betrays me. Ahem. Trapped within my own mind. Something, something in French. My will dissolves to blood. The soul's red rind. Life is but a march towards death. Right, Graves? Graves isn't listening to us anymore. He's pacing around and mumbling in agony. How do you know all this, Reese? Graves and my dad went to college together. He went to their shows. He met your mother at one of them, if I recall. You have me to thank for your very existence, my boy. Oh, sorry, that was Graves talking. Ugh, don't put it like that. Everybody's laughing and having a good time. Even Graves is being a good sport. This is nice. I wonder how long they've been working together. They're all like a big family. Graves is a lot more charming than I thought. He knows how to work a, cr a crowd, at least. I'm starting to get it. I guess this is why nobody's all that mad at Graves, even though they're going through this weird nonsense. He's kind of like everybody's weird but benevolent uncle. We all chat over dinner and then coffee, and before I know it, the sun is totally gone. How long have we been doing this? Shoot, I better get home and feed Mochi before he throws a fit. He gets real passive-aggressive when he's fed late. 
It is quite late. I'll take care of all the dishes and sundries, so please relax and prepare yourselves to face the day tomorrow. Yeah, I guess we better all get going, huh? Hmm, later. Mason's already headed out the back. She barely even turns her head when she waves goodbye. All right, everybody, see you tomorrow. Boy, it got late. The streetlights are on. I still sort of hate walking the back roads at night because they're kind of sparsely lit. I don't know why, but I feel a little like it's a bad idea tonight. I decided to take the other way home. It's a bit longer, but the store lights are brighter once I get through this alley. Besides, it's pretty nice out. There's a lot of rusty junk on this street. Someone just dumped their crappy old bike here? Rude. How long has it been there? It looks like it's been around for years, but I don't remember seeing a messed up bike like that yesterday. Should be more observant. Gray should complain about it to someone. It doesn't make the walk to the cafe look that good to customers. Can't shake this creeping feeling clawing up my spine. This is a quiet neighborhood. I've never felt this something. Something feels different, off, airy. I haven't been getting much sleep lately. I could be imagining it. I don't know. All I know is I wanna be home. There's one other person on the street. Doesn't look like he's going anywhere. What is he doing? This is a weird place to loiter. Is he lost? I should offer him directions. As I get closer, he looks like an anime character. He whips his head around and stares me down with an intense gravity, threatening to root me in place and allows, and allow the chill in my spine to sink in its claws. I sever eye contact and hurry on my way. Never mind, I shouldn't talk to him at all. Maybe I should have crossed the street to avoid this because I seem to have his attention now. At the corner of my eye when I pass, I see his head move to follow me. I walk faster. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating, making things up, but I'm not about to stay and find out what his deal is. Yikes. I feel like he's still watching me, but I'm not going to look back to find out. I walk even faster. Yikes. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of mole hair molehill here but that was creepy i'm gonna stick to the back streets after all better go take care of mochi before he jumps through the window and attacks me for food i head upstairs and the rest of the night is pretty quiet no more weirdos on the street just the four-legged weirdo that lives in my apartment but it turns out if i'd stuck around i would have seen the man continue on his way i would have seen him take the back alley all the way to the cafe I would have seen him stare in the window of the cafe for a long time, then up to the third floor. I would have seen him leave a rusty handprint on the shutters of the building across the street. What? Okay. So I kind of knew from looking at the achievements that rust was a thing. Also in the opening, you see a street lamp that kind of like turns all rusty. So is that like an enemy of Graves's who's also a witch who was able to turn things rusty? And what does that have to do with cats? Oh, so many questions. I'm loving this game so much. It's getting really interesting. All right, well, if you guys are enjoying this game, let me know, like, tell me what you think down in the comments. And uh, if you are enjoying this video and this series, please press the like and subscribe buttons. I really do appreciate all of your support. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.